Okay, we're going to do some building of the case and the key switches and all that stuff. So some stuff we're going to need here is uh, need some screws and, uh, and nuts and stuff. We'll come back to that in a minute. You're going to need this spacer uh, and we're going to take the uh, paper off of that. Then we need this key plate and then we'll need this eventually, but uh, we're going to set that aside for right now. And then, of course, we need some switches. So we'll come back to those again as well. But for the moment, I'm going to set these aside and get a couple things prepared here. So set the key plate up here. First thing we got to do is uh, peel this paper off of the, uh, the spacer. I mean, you don't need to, but it smells like burning and uh, from the laser. and. Uh, It'll make things smell less weird, less bad if you peel the paper off. It's basically soot from the laser um, stuck on there. Um, I've got some tweezers here. Uh, nice thing is this piece is inside the case, so it doesn't really matter if you scratch it or anything. Um, so you just peel this stuff off. We got some holes to punch out. If you see these little holes still have some plastic in them, just uh, punch those out lightly. Uh, I suggest do this process fairly carefully. Um, this thing tends to break uh, here uh, fairly often. If it does, it's not a big deal because this is all again inside. It's just acting as uh, a little extra space or gap and uh, it's not super crucial, but helps things look kind of nice on the outside as well. All right, that's that side. This one's already got some stuff torn off, so let's kind of do the other side. Once upon a time, I could get this to sort of peel off all in one take, but uh, maybe not today. This is the exciting content you signed in for today. All right, that's ready. This is kind of also another thing can break, but uh, this little, sorry, off screen. This little guy right there might break off. If it does, don't worry about it. It's not going to be the end of the world. All right, we have our spacer ready. And we're going to set that aside and swap it for the key plate, which is this PCB business, this guy. So this is sort of the top of the case. And the keys go into this, then attach to the PCB, which I will show you in a minute. If you soldered your keys on first before doing this, you're going to have to start over. <laughs> Sorry, a couple people uh, just kind of jammed through and just started soldering stuff. And um, I apologize for not having a video ready earlier, but uh, read through the documentation and this information is there, I think. Um, and hopefully uh, described well. If not, I'll try to make it better. So uh, we're gonna want some keys. Uh, sorry, switches, switches, not keys just yet. So I've got my switches here. A uh, couple things to kind of keep in mind. Uh, let, that guy's got a little bent leg and you might wanna grab some tweezers and just kind of like lightly bend that uh, if you see one that's out of place. But super important to make, those, make sure those are straight in a minute. We don't have to worry about it just yet. So key things, key things, ah, key switches. Uh, uh, things we got to remember here are there's orientation to these switches. So the pins, uh, let's see if we can get to the wide angle. Pins there on the bottom, uh, I'll set that over. So the pins need to go to the bottom of the PCB. So when these are gonna go into place on the key, key switch, um, key plate, um, these are going to snap in and we're going to do all that first and then attach the whole thing to the PCB. So pins go to the bottom and we're going to start in the top corner here and these kind of will snap into place. Now this is going to be a fairly tight snug fit. There's some little notches there, uh, little tabs. And if you need to take these out, you're going to need some tweezers or something to kind of pop those little tabs in to snap them out again, because uh, there's a fairly snug fit into these, into these slots. You're gonna wanna make sure that the key is, uh, the switch is nice and snug in there and it's not popped up at all. Maybe I'll do one of these as a, 
uh, what not to do. But uh, I'm going to snap these into place. And you can kind of set them in there first and then go back through and snap them or do whatever you want to do. But you're going to be a pretty pos positive. Yeah, I can see if I could get that on, on audio. But uh, there's going to be a pretty positive snap. All right, there's an example of that one's not quite snapped into place, right? So that top one looks good. That bottom one has got a little gap there. So you want to give that a good snap. And, uh, ow. and then poke yourself with the pins on the bottom. Uh, so let's maybe do this and uh, maybe I'll fast forward this or maybe I won't and uh, get all these guys snapped in. Cue up yakety sacks in the background here to uh, go through the uh, fast forward segments. Uh, there's no real order to this. I'm just going through kind of however I feel like it. Uh, double check them on the bottom as you go to make sure the pins are facing towards the bottom of bottom of the PCB. Um, make sure that the printing is on the top so you're not snapping these in backwards. The uh, jacks go to the left side and you don't want to like snap these in upside down and be like, oh wait, this doesn't work because they're kind of a pain to take out again or at least it's not super easy to get them out. I guess I need to make those uh, slots a tiny bit bigger. Don't know. Um, it does look like there's some unevenness to the routing here. Do, do, do. The whole idea with this key plate thing is that these switches do not have mounting supports on the side. So on the PCB, you'll see some extra holes to the side. And that's for a different kind of switch that has a mounting uh, snap-in sort of connector thingy on the bottom of the switch. These switches do not, and they rely on a key plate to help support them and keep them from wiggling around. Um, things you learn studying about the keyboard things, the mechanical keyboard world is kind of crazy. All right, let's get some more of these guys going. Check our work. Yes. That one's not in there. All right, good. I've got a bent pin here. You just kind of maybe nudge those with your finger, not too hard. It'll become obvious which ones are out when we get to pushing this onto this PCB. Keep checking. Got a bit pin there. Straighten that. All right, cool. Now, let's look at that, maybe this way. So the keys are nice and snug and flat. Kind of look at it, maybe down the, down the edge there to make sure they look nice. I'm doing terrible here, so let's just show you. Um, 
and then make sure all the pins are the right direction, which they appear to be, and we're in a good place. All right, so just to see what this does, grab our assembled board, and we finished this up in the last video, and in theory, this is just gonna drop right on there. Now, don't do anything too crazy just yet, but just to make sure things are cool, we wanna sort of drop this in place and see if all the pins line up on the cues. And we we'll probably need to kind of look at it and uh, see what's going on. Something, you're going to probably do this by feel, I think, but something doesn't look like it's matching up right. So I'm going to have to look at some of these keys and see, like, there's some here that are good, some in the middle that aren't good. And uh, let's take a look at our pins here. Yeah, I've got a bent pin right here. So straighten that up a little bit. These holes for the the switch pins are pretty big, so you, if they're a little bent, it's probably fine. Um, but just kind of look at these, make sure they're kind of straightish. And uh, that looks a little better. Again, we're just kind of eyeballing this. Hey, that seems like it sort of fit in a lot better. All right, so just looking at that sort of sandwich there, that looks pretty flat, so that's good. Now, don't do anything yet. We're taking that off because we want to get this guy and let's kind of get our stack going here. So this spacer is going on top of the board in between the key plate and the switch plate, or the, uh, the key plate and the, the main PCB. Um, switch plate, key plate, switch plate, I don't know. One of those things. Um, this doesn't like snap into place or anything like that. It just sits here. So if it's kind of put it down and then wiggle it, maybe back and forth until it feels flat. Uh, some of these will curve up a little bit on the edges, and um, that's just because the, the, the curve looks really thin, it gets hot when you laser it, and it might have a little bend to it. No big deal, because we're gonna screw this all together, and that'll flatten it out. And uh, so again, kind of find like a little wiggle to things that uh, gets it in place. We're gonna do that again after we drop this into place. So now, we've got spacer in, this guy's going to sit in there, and everything should be pretty flat. There may be a tiniest little gap between the uh, the switch plate or the key plate. Sorry, let's get down here. Get down here. There might be a tiny little gap there, um, just because there's some inconsistencies in the sort of width of the uh, uh, curlic that's there, and sometimes it's uh, could also be if things aren't nice and flat there. Check to make sure your switches are set all the way in the, the key plate there. So just kind of give that a double check. But you can flip this over and give it a quick look and see if you've got pins sticking out of all the holes on the bottom, which you should. That's cool. And you're gonna to wanna to sort of triple check this a couple times to make sure there wasn't a bent pin and one's not underneath before you solder it all together and you end up with like, oh, I have a, a pin missing, what's going on? So. Uh, give it a quick look on the bottom. Check for, check your sort of pins in each of the slots. Uh, I don't know if I have a good way to show that here, but anyway, give it a good look and see what's going on. If it all looks pretty good, kind of leave that for a second. Then we need some screws and nuts. So this is just for assembly. We're going to use a few screws to hold things in place. Uh, so what I suggest is get the ends. And the idea here is we're gonna sandwich this all together and then you won't have to hold everything when you solder it. It's already sort of in place and it's not gonna go anywhere. So uh, put the screw through, put the nut on the bottom right under the PCB. I kind of do the end, maybe the center. Um, there's a lot of extra holes here um, in the case design, which um, I sort of overcompensated and made lots of holes. Um, but don't necessarily need to use all these. You can if you want to. Um, if for this stage, anyway, we're going to take this all apart again, or take the screws out anyway. Um, so let's get going on over here. It's like all hands up here in the top camera. Huh? Okay, so I've screwed that in. Um, you could get, a, you know, screwdriver and tighten that up a little bit. Um, I'm not going to worry about it right now but um, you can just do that with your fingertips and kind of nut. Um, if you do get a pair of pliers or something here to hold this, make sure you don't scratch the PCB. That's uh, a bad thing to happen at this stage. So um, take a look again, make sure things are nice and flat, looking pretty good right there. 
Again, here's you see in a little bit of a gap right there. Um, I think that's fine. I, again, I, I think that's just sort of this gap is going to be a little higher right at the keys. Um, don't have a real good solution for that. That the uh, the acrylic's just a little bit thinner than our than our gap here. Uh, but make sure, and if you can kind of see through there, make sure that the keys are seated, you know, all the way down, and that you've got pins sticking out of each of these holes down here. So let's see if we can get it on this camera. So you just make sure you've got pins sticking out all the way around. Um, you can give us sort of an extra good press together when you solder it if you want to, or maybe even, let's get these corner nuts in here too, just for, just for fun. We'll make sure everything is as tight as we can get it before we solder. Yeah, it helps a little bit in the corners. Maybe even one up here. Where the heck is the screwdriver? One second. left screwdriver across the room. So I'm gonna go through and just tighten these and uh, kind of hold the nut with my fingertips. Let's see if we can get this on camera. So, kind of tighten that. Just give them a little extra snug. Yeah, I got a couple of turns there, I can tighten these up. Okay, you don't have to use your uh, pliers on this, just Use your fingertips. Um, if it feels like it's extra gappy somewhere, you could also put the other couple of nuts in there. Maybe in this one right here. That's it. I think on the, in the instructions I said go down the middle, um, but you can do corners too. Yeah, I don't know that's changing much there. But I think it's probably fine. I'm gonna eyeball this one more time. You know, looking down, let's see if I can do this on this camera. Like looking down the edge there, try to make sure that everything looks nice and flat. I'm kind of doing that from my eyeball perspective. Um, looks pretty good to me. And then we are ready to uh, solder some switches. Hooray! So, you've got your spacer, got switches, key plate, everything looks good. Um, I'm going to drop my uh, little rubber feet. Little rubber feet here. Keep those handy in your bag with your extra screws. And we're going to come back to that later. So, solder in time. Get my fan in here a little closer. That's right, camera, isn't it? Yeah, we'll do right there. All right, now, uh, I kind of went through this before, but um, tack one leg down first on each LED or on each switch and then come back and do the other side. Uh, do one pass, sort of the same pin all the way down and um, Another good time to just double check you got pins sticking out of all the holes. I'm going to do that every time here, just to be extra sure. Yes, 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 yes. All right. So you could uh, grab your uh, spacers from before. Use that to sort of prop it up, make it nice and flat. And let's get soldering. Oh, you know what? This is one of those where, uh, for me... I want to have the whole thing kind of this direction to get a good contact on these. So maybe we'll get that nice and three-dimensional on the, on the wide-angle camera there. All right, so uh, 
soldering technique thing here, I want to get my iron sort of sideways flat on the switch and also touching the pad. Um, another tip here is you want to be pretty quick with this switch soldering because you don't want these pins to heat up crazy amounts and get hot on the plastic of the uh, switch body. So you just want to kind of heat it up, one, two, three, give it a quick little feed, give it another three count, one, two, three, and hey, look, it's done. And that might even be overkill if we're just going to tack these first, but I think everything looks pretty good, so I can just kind of go with it. Uh, if it looks like it needs a little bit more solder, just hit, give it a little dab. These don't have to be like filled, way mounded up full of solder, just see what you got. Um, Another thing to be wary of is try not to melt the uh, plastic bit here of the mounting peg uh, with your iron as you sort of go through these. Um, I have a tendency to sort of like hit the LEDs or the uh, or the key switches there, and uh, you want to like get plastic melty fumes is pretty much what you want to avoid. Uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter if you melt the switch peg there; it doesn't hurt anything. It's just more like huffing, burning plastic smell. Nobody wants that. Solder and solder. This fan does need to be maybe closer here. Cool. All right, where are we at? Looking good. It's like easy breezy soldering though. You just got to heat it up, feed it, good. had that moment of, did I test all the uh, switch contacts? Hmm, I think I did in the other video, but if I didn't, it really hurt, hurt, helps to go through and test each individual switch contact before you do the soldering business, so that, uh, just in case a diode isn't working, or something like that. I think I mentioned this in the previous video, but good to do with some tweezers or a piece of wire ahead of time, because if you screw this something up at this stage, you're gonna have to desolder all of these switches, which is not really fun to do, I think. It's just a lot of solder sucker action. They're actually pretty easy to undo compared to some things anyway. Where are we at? We're like way off screen here. So let's, uh, I got a lot of solder on that blob right there. I'm gonna kind of hit it again, wick some of that off. All right, let's get, uh, we should go to the wide angle camera and show the overhead, I don't know. Leave me comments about how terrible this is. Do, do, do. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. Hey, I missed one. I don't know why I'm counting, but you know, I know there's twenty-seven, so make sure I got them all done. And we got that one over there too. So uh, let's give it another look and uh, 
ready to do the other side. Maybe I'll flip this around this way for this camera. And then do the other pins. Where's my little spacer right here? Do -do -do. Maybe it's easier without that space here. Let's go back and do this down here. I'll jump to that end of the board. If you see something that needs a little resoldering, give it a little hit.
Oop, missed one. It's a good thing I'm checking. Come back later and go, hey, this switch doesn't work. Forgot to solder it. It's kind of giving some of these a little extra solder. They look a little weak. And it doesn't hurt to sort of heat them up a second time just to get that solder flowing. All right, for all intents and purposes, it looks like they are all good here. I'm just giving everything a little quick little eyeball. Uh, maybe this guy. Okie doke. So, while things are still screwed together, eh, whatever, uh, you could uh, plug it in and uh, check your switches. Get some startup. Let's get this down here. It's a rainbow. And if you press these, now the lights, LED should light up. And you'll also see a note number up here on this display. Uh, that aux key doesn't really do anything, but it does light up, so you can check and see if it works. Cool. So, everything is working. Great. Now, we're going to want to unscrew the screws and put the uh, bottom part on, and then the case is kind of done. But maybe, maybe, just maybe, we'll want to uh, clean this up a little bit. So, let's get... Uh, Ice bubble again, and there's my ice bubble alcohol, and uh, it's full of that thing too. It takes a while to pump it up into the, uh, the reservoir. We're gonna need more. Not working very well. How many times do I have some in there? Hey, there we go. Maybe I need to go slower because maybe that's my problem. Okay, I'm just going to kind of give everything just a little wipe down. We got all the stuff we did before that I didn't really clean up. And uh, usually this is going to kind of tear up whatever it is you're using to clean. Not super crucial if you're using no clean flux. If you got the rosiny stuff, you definitely want to clean up though. Uh, definitely linting. A bunch of things here but we actually want to clean this up a little bit because the base plate is clear and we're gonna see the bottom of this so you don't want it to be too janky looking I mean maybe you don't care I care Go through a few different wipes here. The pots tend to uh, be a little tougher. Uh, another little trick: you can get Q-tip, Q-tip, or what do they call these elsewhere in the world? Uh, swabs, puffs. I don't remember. Uh, you could kind of get those hard-to-reach spots with the. Uh, Q-tip and do that bit first, especially around these headers and stuff. And then it's going to leave a little residual residue, so you kind of want to wipe it up everywhere. There's lots of stuff sticking down, so it might not be all that easy to get this to be clean necessarily, but give it a shot. And then could also get a uh, you know, bunch of gunk right there. But these uh, cotton swabs leave cottony marks or cottony fluff all over the place. So not that necessarily. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you, again, maybe you don't care. I'm trying to be nice and clean here. Um, another technique which sometimes works is um, if you have an old toothbrush, you can kind of get some of the fluff and or residual bits of cotton or uh, wipes 
antenna off of there. You can also get a little bit of uh, that on the uh, teeth brush itself, give it a good sort of scrub, and then hit it with uh, a quick sort of blot to uh, take, take care of some of that evaporation of the uh, alcohol. I don't know if that's better or worse. Sometimes it's better. Let's see. Sometimes just like a little bit of that does the job. Better, worse, other, don't know. You know, kind of hard to tell. Uh, we do this all day. So let's move on to the next thing. And that's going to be, we're going to take these screws and bolts out because then we're going to fix the actual bottom to the uh, case, base plate, bottom plate, I don't know, what do you want to call it? Base plate, I think that's what I've been calling it. You know, a good... Double O, single O, triple O screwdriver is worth its weight in gold. You should have one of those. If you don't, go get one. Um, this one's got extra bits in the in the head there. I like it. It's good. Good tool. Just kind of like drop those guys out. Don't lose those. If you do, two and a half, 2.5, or uh, sorry, two and a half millimeter, but M2.5 screws and bolts. These are 10 millimeter long. So if for some reason you lose one, you want an extra one, you go crazy, put bolts on everything, get some extras if you want to. But there's eight here to hold the whole thing together. And cool. All right, so now you've taken those off, but everything still should be nicely affixed and not going anywhere, right? Cool. Now, let's see here. I gotta go across the room and get a base plate. One second. set back on. Uh, you could probably see me fumbling around in bins there in the darkness in the background. All right, we got a couple things. Uh, let's get this slid up here. We got a base plate. We're going to take the, uh, the paper off of that. And we got this thing. What the hell is this all about? So this is a little PCB that uh, I guess is optional, but I'm going to highly recommend this because people have a tendency to break the USB jack off of a TNC when it's mounted to a board. So this is going to go on there and screw into place and protect the USB from getting broken off, in theory. Haven't really tested this or swung it around or you know given it a stress test, but way better than that guy just kind of snapping off like that. You could probably have that on there and it'll kind of keep it nice and snug because it's uh, almost flush against the jack there. If you can kind of look at it and see it over there. So hopefully that will help with the uh, USB jack being fragile, as it were. All right, these uh, paper on the uh, base plate, way easier to peel off in one quick hit. So you can get the whole thing. And then maybe on this side, I gotta get it started. Just like get a corner torn up like that. You can kind of peel the whole thing slowly back. And then, 
Uh, you got a little cutout here for the uh, the jacks and the teensies over here, so it should be pretty obvious what direction it goes in. And that should just kind of slot right in because all these pins have got little holes for them to go in. So you don't need to trim off the pins on the bottom. They're just going to fit into these little slots that are already there. So should be, again, super flat once we kind of get it put together. So let's do a bolt in the middle, or a, a screw in the middle, and kind of show you this uh, captive thing that's going on. So maybe this is going to go this way. And um, you'll see there's a little sort of half cutout on the bottom. Let's see if we can get that up in the, uh, in the camera there. So it's sort of a captive nut situation for the nut. So if you let, you got to kind of two-hand this. So you're going to get that nut to sort of sit in that little cutout. And then from the other, hold that with your fingertip in place. And then from the other side, you want to screw that screw in. And the nut should get held in place by the little captive thing. And you'll end up with it sort of semi-recessed right there. But it should keep it in place. You don't have to tighten that crazy amount. So I just go until it's snug and everything should be cool like that. So we've got the center. Let's do the corners. Pretty much everywhere where there's a little cutout is where the bolts go. Um, so there's a one here, one here, one here. So again, if you kind of just like set the, uh, the nut bolt nut nut is what that is um, in there hold it with your finger going from the other side and screw that one down now important I'm starting on the uh, the switchy side here we're gonna use this guy on the other side so don't type don't do the ones by the teensy yet those are gonna be last so let's do corner again kind of hold it with your finger you don't even have to have it like super in the slot there you'll get it tightened up once you screw it together. So, looking good. Hold that with my finger again. And we've got three bolts left and we're gonna use this hole right here next to the encoder and these two, or the last two. So, let's do this one. Um, got to do this backwards this way. Hold that with my finger. Screw this in. And that one is a little, doesn't want to go. So you may end up with, if this happens, you could kind of just take a screwdriver, see if there's a little extra burnt up plastic on the inside of this, and give it like a little bit of a, a scrape. Um, technique there sometimes leaves a little extra plastic behind. All right, so let's try that again. That one just doesn't want to go today. Hey, there it goes. You'll find that the nut will probably snap into place when it sort of gets there. All right, now we got our PCB protector and that's going to go on top. Maybe drop your screw in uh, first. And this is a little trickier because this one doesn't has a captive slot there, but it's all the way down. So you want maybe you want to get your uh, your nut kind of partially in there, and then maybe hold it with your finger and give this one just like a couple of turns until we get the other one. All right, that's connected. Let's drop the other one in there. And these are a little trickier because you got to get them flat. Tight tolerances, I guess. Let's try it with the screw. Haven't done this too many times, but um, again, you're holding it with your finger back there and get the kind of screw to kind of punch through. See if you can get it. Uh... Nope. That one, we might need some tweezers to get it unstuck. Hey, there we go. If it kind of gets in at an angle, get some tweezers, poke at it, hold it in place with your finger, get the. Uh... Didn't want to have two different sizes of nuts, uh, two different sizes of screws. So these guys are actually up against the PCB inside there with the captive, uh, with the captive nut. Um, you might want to adjust this position ever so slightly right at the very end and make sure that is nice and snug against the edges. Um, kind of just use your thumb to press it there and then give it a good tight once it's in place. And 
I got another screw. I got another screw hole here. What's going on? Hey, I got one more screw. And we got some rubber feet. Rubber feet, good. Uh, let's get the corner here. And all right. Now, uh, I'm a fan of little rubber feet to hold this in place. Right now, it's kind of really supported on the nuts itself. Shouldn't really go anywhere, but it'll slide around on a softer surface. This silicone mat really won't go anywhere. But you can use little rubber feet right where the screws are or somewhere in the middle or something like that. And uh, I just put one in each corner. doesn't really matter if you cover up some holes here. Put them next to the, uh, just inside of the, uh, you know, I should have that on screen right there. Um, just put them right next to the, the screws. Uh, for the ends, let's do the corners first. Then it's kind of up to you, but uh, maybe in the middle of both top and the bottom is a good place to put these. So where that middle screw is, maybe put one there. And up near the LMX logo here, somewhere there. All right, so now if we see that over here on this camera, we've got like enough uh, you know, that side is what I'm looking for. The, uh, the little rubber nub is a little higher than the nut, therefore it's going to keep it nice and uh, supported and should give you a little bit better uh, stickiness on a, on a smooth surface. So let's get that there. All right, that is assembly. Uh, you could uh, peel off your uh, OLED uh, little thing here if you want. Leave that for later. You know, maybe that's something you want to do as a uh, unveiling. I don't know. Uh, and then keycaps are next and knobs, but uh, that's pretty easy. You just snap those on. So don't know that we need to really go into too much detail about that. Um, that is the assembled thingy.